It's time for Lagos update on the City of Lagos TV show. This week, we are going to be bringing you the concluding series of the 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Briefing. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <music> First, on the concluding series of the 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Briefing, this week, we kick off with the Ministry of Finance. Considering the strategic responsibility of the Ministry of Finance to coordinate the financial imperatives and initiatives necessary and appropriate for the Lagos State Government in the provision of the dividends of democracy to teeming Lagosians, it is of great importance to ascertain the level of progress made so far in the past one year of the second term of Governor Babajide Somolu, the Commissioner for Finance, Lagos State, Mr. Abayomi Oluyomi, articulated the significant initiatives and efforts of the ministry at the just concluded 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Briefing. The ministry in the past year has experienced several transformations, innovations, and process reviews demonstrating prudent, financial management in all the facets of this administration development initiatives. We do sincerely appreciate all constructive appraisers and valuable suggestions. We remain committed to consolidating the policies that helped in promoting our performance ratings. Our focus remains on our ministry's vision, which is to transform the Lagos State Minister of Finance into the model manager for public finance in Africa. And our mission is to manage financial risk effectively towards achieving the needs and aspirations of the government and the people of Lagos State. It is no gain saying to say that one of the wheels that lubricates this administration is the Minister of Finance. So I will take it one by one. I will start with the imperatives and the responsibilities of this ministry in this administration. Our assigned ministerial responsibilities entail providing the financial framework to assist the government and her ministries, departments and agencies in meeting the yearnings of our people for good governance, economic development and prosperity. The details of the assigned ministerial mandate include, is a lot, you know, considering what the Commissioner for Information and Strategy has told you, is a very, very strategic ministry. Number one, we formulate and advise the government on physical initiatives and policies. We evaluate policies relating to finance and financial matters. We advise on financial instruments on behalf of the state government. We advise on taxation and revenue policies and programs. We keep tax laws and revenue structures under constant review to create the most modern, functional, efficient, and transparent tax system. We support the Internal Revenue Service, I'm happy the chairman is here, to modernize and optimize its structures and processes. We assist all other revenue generating agencies, departments, and consultants to improve their laws and administrative and operational practices. We advise on the harmonization and optimization of taxes applicable in the state and advise the state government on areas and sources of new revenue. We formulate and coordinate the implementation of financial policy and regulations, monitoring of all the state revenue sources, Ensure budget discipline that is balancing public expenditures with state resources. We determine the funding priorities of the state. We formulate the accounting policies and maintain the accounting standards. We prepare and render final accounts and lay them before public complaints committee or a public accounts committee of the state house of assembly. We prepare and submit to the government for consideration 
in the annual budget, a forecast of the state's borrowing capacity, a forecast of loan service obligations for each financial year, and advise the government on the terms, conditions, and conditions on which monies are to be borrowed. And still on Lagos update, the Ministry of Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs and Rural Development in the last one year of Governor Babajide Sonwulu's second term has made significant impact and achievements in actualizing the mandate and vision under the ABLE Commissioner, Mr. Bolaji Kayode Roberts. The Commissioner reeled out some of the key progress and success made so far at the 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Press Briefing. The present administration is conscious of the fact that in order to achieve the overall development of the state, there must be significant and commensurate development at the grassroots level. Hence, it's resolved to a policy trust that is totally people-oriented and community-driven. The Local Government Administration Department is one of the core operational departments of the Ministry of Local Government, Chieftains Affairs, and Rural Development. It is through this department that the ministry carries out supervisory roles of the 57 local governments and local council development areas. In the year under review, the ministry, through the local government administration department, successfully carry out the following. Joint account allocation committee, which is usually reserved at Jack, as Jack meeting, is a statutory body charged with the responsibilities of disbursing federal statutory allocation to local government in the state. It usually holds its monthly meeting following release of funds by the federal government. The, minute, the meeting have in attendance the Honorable Commissioner, Minister of Finance, as the chairman, the Honorable Commissioner, Minister of Local Government, Chieftaincy, Affairs, and Rural Development, the Permanent Secretary, Anakata General, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs and Rural Development, Auditor General for Local Government, as well as Chairman of the 57 Local Government and SEDs and their Council Treasurers. As part of the Ministry's responsibility in ensuring adherence to administrative guidelines on administrative procedures, the Ministry has continued to hold periodic meetings with chairmen across the 57 councils. The ministry also coordinates special meetings between Mr. Governor and chairmen of local government and local council development area on issues bordering on policies and development in the local councils. The ministry recently organized a two-day capacity building workshop for 376 councillors across the councils. This is, this is part of the state government's roles in improving the law making capacity of councillors across the 57 councils. The local government functionaries must possess requisite skill to be able to meet the challenges of providing service, services to the populace and complement the effort of the state government in the same direction. In the year under review, the ministry also ensured the release of claims to 264 beneficiaries of deceased employees of suburb and local government and, lo and local council development areas. In the first and second tranches, for beneficiaries of deceased employees of local government and local council development areas, a total of 153,260,308 naira and 69 cobalt was disbursed 
to 122 beneficiaries, while a total of 167 million 49,471 naira, 69 kobo was disbursed as first and second trashes to 142 beneficiaries of deceased employees of State Universal Basic Education, SUBEB, amounting to 391 million 226,000 636 naira and five kobo. This is part of Baba Jide Olusholo Sonwolu Gueso. Local Government Monitoring Department. The Local Government Monitoring Department perform the duty of monitoring, supervising pre projects and post projects and other activities in the 57 local governments and local council development area for effective service delivery and many others. You can read this in your booklet. They've done a lot. We also have boundary department. The functions of, the, of this department is derived from the statutory duties of the State Boundary Committee and the National Boundary Commission Law 2006, which established the State Boundary Committee. Within the periods under review, the department attended to several reports relating to boundary issues in the state, and it's and its neighboring state, which is Ogun State. This department, too, has done a lot in crisis uh, resolving uh, area. The Shiftency Affair Department. The Shiftency Affair Department is responsible for the general administration of traditional institutions across the state in accordance with the OBAS and Chief Law Cap 02 Law of Lagos State of Nigeria 2003. It takes care of the general welfare, welfare of all recognized others, ballots, and chief, and ensures that traditional institutions and values of our people are preserved. Within the period under review, welfare and capacity building of others ballots and chiefs in the states have remained a priority of this administration and the ministry has been unwaveringly committed to ensuring that the priority of Mr. Governor as it concerns the welfare of our traditional rulers in Lagos State is actualized. Saddled with coordinating the activities of ministries and government agencies, especially on the implementation of government policies and decisions, as well as acting as a liaison with the Secretary to the Government and supervision of Cabinet Office. The Office of the Head of Service is no doubt a strategic and critical facilitator of quality governance in Lagos State. But what are the success story of the Head of Service in the one year under review? Let's hear from the HOS Lagos State Body Aguru. The Public Service Office, uploading and deployment of newly recruited officers. During the period under review, 456, 4,566 4, newly recruited officers in the various cadres were uploaded into the Oracle database and thereafter deployed to relevant ministries, departments, and agencies where their services will be highly required. Induction of newly employed administrative and human resources officers. In the same period, 166 newly recruited admin and human resources officers undertook the familiarization tour to key MDAs to improve their human resources management skills and acquaint themselves with the public service enrollment. Appointment of new permanent secretaries. 
I wish to report that during the period under review, Mr. Governor approved, amongst other appointments of principal officers, the elevation of 24 senior public servants to the position of permanent secretaries. These accounting officers were drawn from the crop of seasoned, uh, proficient, and competent senior management officers across different cadres. It is pertinent to state that the Office of the Head of Service just concluded a screening exercise for aspiring candidates for the position of permanent secretaries and titular generals in the state. A total of 505 applications were received and uh, took part in the computer based training. Issuance of service wide circulars. A total of 125 service wide circulars on policy, guidelines, and other state activities were issued during the period under review. Retreats. Two retreats were held to create synergy amongst arms of government, review policy options, and strengthen the institutional framework of MPAs. The State Executive Council and Body of Permanent Secretary Retreat was, was took place on the 13th to the 16th of September 2023. Directors of Admin and Human Resources Retreat also took place on the 23rd to the 25th of November 2023. Procurement and Allocation of Official and Utility Vehicles. Since Mr. Governor's assumption of office, he has given official vehicles to newly appointed permanent secretaries, chairmen, and members of statutory commissions, heads of MDAs in the state. In his magnanimity, he has demonstrated total commitment to replacing old and serviceable vehicles of ministries and departments and agencies as a way of strengthening the capacity of the government institution to the effective delivery of their mandate. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, is of the view that healthy citizens are the backbone of a robust economy and every step taken is a step towards a more healthy and prosperous Lagos. The Commissioner, who made this known at the just-concluded 2024 Ministerial Briefing, highlighted the major significant achievements and health initiatives of the Ministry at the press briefing. Our administration is committed to a proactive approach in health management emphasizing preventative medicine, capacity building, and infrastructural enhancement. This commitment is underpinned by a vision to not only meet the immediate healthcare needs of our populace, but also to anticipate future challenges and address them before they escalate. As we delve into the details of our strategies and initiatives, I invite each one of you to see yourselves as partners in this noble endeavor, whether you are healthcare professionals, policy makers, community leaders, or indeed engaged citizens, your contributions are invaluable to our success. The landscape of healthcare in Lagos State has evolved significantly over the years, driven by both global influences and local demands. The advent of the COVID-19 pandemic catalyzed an urgent need to reassess and reinforce our healthcare system to ensure resilience against future health crises while addressing the everyday health needs of our populous state. Before the pandemic, Lagos, like any other region worldwide, faced several systemic challenges. These include limited access to healthcare services, particularly in underserved communities, and financial barriers that prevent many from seeking necessary care. The public and private healthcare infrastructure, while extensive by local standards, falls short of global and World Health Organization best practices, while at the same time, we're trying to meet up with an ever-growing demand of our expanding urban population. Additionally, there are disparities in the health service quality between rural and urban areas, compound, compounded by suboptimal workforce environment that led to brain drain and inefficiencies within the system. The onset of COVID-19 exposed vulnerabilities in our healthcare system, particularly in areas of emergency preparedness 
critical care, and public health surveillance. The pandemic underscored the importance of a robust healthcare infrastructure and rapid response capabilities. It revealed the critical need for a healthcare system that is not only capable of managing large-scale public health emergencies, but also at the same time equipped to sustain regular healthcare services under a strained situation. In response to these challenges, the Lagos State Ministry of Health is systematically assessing the entire healthcare system. This comprehensive evaluation, which is at an advanced stage, aims to identify key areas for immediate improvement and long-term sustainability. The findings so far have led to the articulation of a multifaceted approach designed to strengthen healthcare delivery across the state. Recognizing the scale of the needed transformation, we have initiated strategic investments aimed at overhauling our entire healthcare infrastructure. This includes the design and construction of new eco-friendly facilities, the renovation of existing facilities, and the integration of cutting-edge technology to improve service delivery. Moreover, we have forged stronger collaborations with the private sector partners, leveraging on their expertise and resources to enhance efficiency and expanded access. Parallel to our infrastructure development, there is a heightened focus on preventive health care and strengthening our public health care systems. And still on Lagos Update, the Lagos State Ministry of Commerce, Cooperatives, Trade and Investment has taken significant initiatives to ensuring that Lagos State remains the preferred destination for investment and trade on the African continent. The Commissioner of the Ministry, Mrs. Fola Shade Ambrose Medebem, who noted this at the 2024 Ministerial Briefing, also highlighted strategic and innovative efforts of the Ministry in the past one year to ensure that Lagos State continues to extract various categories of investment and promote ease of doing business. In the last one year of the second term of the administration, the Ministry stepped up its activities in its commitment to attract and sustain viable and vibrant investment and develop commercial trade, industrial and cooperative based activities in the state. We sought to drive sustainable economic growth through improved business support policies and infrastructures to continue to attract foreign and domestic investments and also to ensure that the equal growth of nanos and micro, small, and medium enterprises also thrived. Our investment promotion thrust actually focuses on ensuring that we continue to retain and bring investment opportunities to Lagos State, and ensuring that we're bringing it to the attention of potential investors with the primary aim to attract further capital, ensure we drive enhanced skills, innovation, and technology to create more local jobs. And we've ensured that we've done that through a number of um, platforms and programs, notably one being the continued participation in investment um, summits. The investment, as we all know, is a critical component for growth and development. And in order to further enhance Lagos State's thriving economy and growing potential position, and in order to ensure we continue to drive more job creation and improve the standard of living, we have participated in a number of domestic and foreign business and investment summits where we've pitched the huge investment potentials, repositioned and ensured that Lagos State's tag that we're equally open for business is really ensured that it's cascaded down to all our critical stakeholders. Recently as well, Lagos State proudly presented, represented, um, was present at the US Africa Investment Summit in Dallas and that was um, just this month, actually. And the theme was US-Africa business partnering for sustainable success. Um, at that event, we ensured that we were strategically visible and ensured that the global and economic prominence of Lagos State was very, very prominent. 
We connected, we engaged, we explored, and we drove new business partnerships with policymakers across public and private sectors. A number of partnerships, investments, a mission is forthcoming to Lagos as a result of our attendance, and further high impact economic development is forthcoming in Q3 2024. The Lagos State Ministry of Justice in the year on the review have exhibited commitment to transforming the justice system in Lagos by efficiently safeguarding the interest of the people and the government by ensuring easy and prompt access to justice in alignment with the themes plus agenda of Mr. Governor. The Commissioner for Justice, Lawal Pedro San, who noted this at the just concluded 2024 ministerial briefing in Lagos, also gave account of significant achievements of the ministry. Over the year, over the past one year, a significant achievement are classified into six areas, namely provision of legal services to MBAs that reduces the government exposure to financial liabilities, access to justice initiative to ensure all citizens, irrespective of status and financial standing, have access to express their grievance and seek remedy. Law and other initiatives, in collaboration with all security agencies in the state, our international partners such as ROLA, UNODC, the Coastal Schools of Law, which is preparing investing in the United States of America, etc. We also engage in legislative initiatives law reform to ensure that our laws align with modern law day realities and Mr. Governor Steam's clause agenda. Then capacity building initiatives such as training, continuing legal education for state council, sensitization of programs, partnership with key stakeholders, police, the judiciary, correctional facilities, services, the Nigeria Bar Association and international agencies. Since the inception of the second term of the office, in office of Mr. Governor, the state government has undertaken numerous groundbreaking initiatives in the area of the justice sector to further enhance its track record. This accomplishment reflects a steadfast commitment to advancing justice and social development in Lagos. Provision of legal services. We have the Directorate of Public Prosecution. The Directorate is saddled with the quick and expedient prosecution of cases in our courts. In the year under review, the Ministry to the Directorate has successfully carried out the following. We have issued legal advices in no less than 377. We have judgments of sentencing of convicts over 40. We have plea bargain about 11 concluded. We have cases about seven struck out and of course four uh, suspects or defendants discharged. We also have plea bargain applications that we also consider which is to reduce and you know decongest our uh, personal services centers. We are also prioritizing restorative justice. The hub which was established in 2022 coordinate all restorative justice activities across the state. This is toward the congesting the docket of our court as well as encourage peaceful reconciliation and quick dispensation of justice. The Central Business Districts Agency has greatly actualized its vision to transform Lagos Central Business Districts into 24th century business city to provide a stress-free, conducive business environment for the benefit of traders, shoppers, and business owners through efficient and effective traffic and environment managers. The Special Advisor to Mr. Governor and Central Business Districts, Mrs. Bola Ulumegon Lawal, made this disclosure at the just concluded Lagos State Ministerial Press Briefing. She however used the occasion to highlight on major significant initiatives and achievements of the agency. Our ministerial mandates. Providing a first-free function and central business district in conjunction with ministries of physical planning and urban development. Collaborating with relevant ministries, departments, and agencies in, in development of other central business districts in line with the state master plan. 
monitoring ongoing activities at the central research district, vocation by redevelopment, by redevelopment. Any other assignment as directed by His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State. Other responsibilities are effective and efficient environmental services and improvement in solid waste management, monitoring and enforcement through the establishment of CDD sanitation corps and collaborative arrangement with LOMA. Effective and efficient traffic management in this CBD through the establishment of CBD traffic management corps. Assisting relevant security agencies in providing intelligence reports and surveillance to enhance adequate security of life and property of business and residents and the provision of emergency management rescue services in collaboration with other agencies of government. Effective rehabilitation of misplant through counseling, engagement and management of unemployed youth. Enhancing the assessment of CBD roads and its surroundings through beautification of the business environment. And as the resources of stakeholders and foster partnership through regular consultation with various interest groups. Promotion of behavioral change toward achieving sense of ownership and responsibility in all stakeholders. Regular maintenance of infrastructure within the business districts. The Office of the Special Advisor to the Governor on Central Business Districts. Of Central Business District Management Office has continued to consolidate on the gains and achievement within the Lagos Business District. Some of the consolidation we are noticeable in traffic and waste management, infrastructural neurons, redevelopment and beautification of road setbacks, sanitation and street trading abatement. The agency has continued to engage in constant and sustained monitoring, control and enforcement of traffic rules within the CBD access, which has led to enhanced flow of traffic within the business district, hence that we appeal to negotiate, especially those operating within the CBDs, to obey traffic rules and regulations and ensure that vehicles are in good shape before coming on the road, as statistics have shown that breakdown of vehicles contribute majorly to traffic issues within the business districts. The Labor Island Business District has large numbers of markets, which generate large volume of waste daily. To effectively manage the large volume of waste, the agency, in conjunction with LOMA, ensures that effective and efficient all round the clock sanitation and cleaning of markets mechanism within the Lagos Island CBD is put in place. The agency monitors the market and ensures that the weekly sanitation exercise is carried out by traders and business owners. CDAs, market leaders, shop owners must ensure that waste are not left unattended to and all households, business premises, and shops must have standardized waste bin for collection of refuse within their premises. To further drive home the message of a clean environment, the office regularly put together advocacy and public enlightenment programs, as well as meetings of all stakeholders operating in the business district deliberate on how best to achieve a clean and healthy environment. To ensure a serene and cleaner environment, all illegal structures and shanties in and around the island and the Kedjabisa district are constantly removed at regular intervals. The CBD sanitation corps in conjunction with LOMA and other sister agencies evacuate debris and shanties built on walkways and drainage alignment from the Lagos Island and the Kedja Business Districts. Street Trading. The agency regularly enforces the no street trading policy of the state government. 
recalcitrant street traders are regularly arrested and prosecuted by the state special affairs mobile court. And if found guilty, are charged accordingly. To further curb these menace, the agency continues to erect more iron barriers at strategic streets to discourage village of trading onto the road and walkways. And away now from the just concluded 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Briefing. And finally, on Lagos update, with the recent launch of the Eco Laws Simplifier application by the Latif Jaconde Leadership Academy, Lagos residents will now have easy access to laws in the state. The innovative initiative, which was disclosed at a press briefing in Lagos by the team lead of the group, Mr. Usman Adeniji, has diverse features, functionalities, and advantages that will boost the knowledge of Lagosians about the laws governing the state. In 2021, according to the Lagos State Ministry of Justice, only 70% of Lagos residents have experienced legal pro one legal problem or the other. In addition to that, and this is being the fact that despite we have many laws in Lagos, we were able to see that 70% of people living in the state have challenges to accessing these laws. That is not all. In 2020, the Lagos State Citizen Mediation Center in 2020, Ably stated that only 30% of people in the state have access to legal information. So um, all of these stats was you know, one of the key pointers for us to go into what we um, into providing an app, which we call the Hegolos, that is going to provide an easy access to all Lagosians, Lagos residents basically, into having great access to laws and the land because this is where we stay. A number of us have spent almost of our lives in this state. So we're doing ourselves a disservice if we don't able to recognize some of the laws, you know, that guides us. And going by the Mr. Governor's uh, team spells agenda, one of the key teams, key teams there, which is the plus, talks about social inclusion. And one of the things for you to be socially inclusive is for you to recognize the laws that guides you within the residence in which you reside. So now going introducing the laws um, proper, which is a capstone project. It is simply called the um, Eco Laws Simplify House. Um, we all can just go through our phones and you know find access to this at www.ecolaws.com, which is currently available on our web platform. And one of the key or some of the key features of this app is one. Is simple and user friendly. Currently in English language, but in the next phase of the project, we are looking to translate it into Yoruba so that it reaches a wider range of people within the state. As we have English, we'll also be having the Yoruba version coming out very soon. Next up, the functionality is quite easy to search, functionality and easy, very easy to navigate. And you agree with me that you know some of the laws that we have today is quite difficult to read because of the technical jargons that we have there. You just see there in year two, and you are wondering what does this law even really say? So we've taken it upon ourselves in collaboration with the Lagos State um, Law Reform Law Reform Commission to break down all these laws in a way that is very easy to understand. Well, that wraps it up on Lagos Update this week. The 2024 Lagos State Ministerial Briefing may have come and gone, but it was quite revealing and assuring that the 28 ministries and agencies in Lagos State have made tremendous giant stride in the one year of Mr. Governor's second term in office. Thanks for watching. Up next is from the Governor's Office, where we bring you latest developments and engagements from the Governor's Office.